General Taylor's family, the Civil War hero. He started the Globe and uh, his family became very active in Boston in every way. John Irving Taylor, one of the uh, members of the Taylor family, his biggest endeavor was real estate, but he also bought the Red Sox in order to promote his real estate company named Fenway Real Estate. And to get people to move to these buildings he was building that were still uninhabited, he needed an attraction. So he took his successful baseball team and moved it here to Fenway Park. A lot of these buildings were built in the 20s and 30s as warehouse buildings for the automotive industry, either automotive repair or automotive sales. Traditionally, it's probably been better known for, for the park and some of the supporting industries of the park, um, as well as a long-standing um, residential neighborhood. I think when people think about Fenway, the first thing that comes to their mind is Fenway Park. Um, and I think for a very long time it was Fenway Park and not a lot else around here. We've discovered this amazing history, stumbled on the history of rock and roll and, and the neighborhood and what it was and you know how many globally influential uh, artists came through this, this village. A lot of people have the feeling Fenway was kind of a drive-through place. It, it had drive-throughs. It had drive-through McDonald's and Burger King and had tire stores and gas stations. And um, it really wasn't the kind of place that the neighborhood wanted it to be. In the late 90s, the former Red Sox ownership worked very hard with city and state officials trying to build a new ballpark next door to Fenway Park. And because of this, there were all kinds of eminent domain questions coming up. There were all kinds of issues about what the neighborhood would look like, et cetera. The Red Sox deciding to stay was a major pivot point. Fenway Park has become a, an incredible anchor to the neighborhood, um, but no longer, I think, defines the neighborhood. At the same time, the um, neighborhood in the city, uh, along with, um, with our team, were working on a comprehensive rezoning effort that took five years. More recently, I think over the last decade, you've seen a, a push by, in particular, Samuels and Associates to, to evaluate the landscape there. This all started with our trilogy site with the idea of let's build a grocery store. Um, and then it really morphed into something much bigger. And the Fenway is probably one of the best examples of urban infill of anywhere in the city right now. We took the time and spent years, not months, years talking to the neighborhood about um, what they'd like to see and what are they comfortable with and what kind of densities and heights and uses and um, what kind of shops and restaurants. The Fenway has always had great amenities and, and continues to build upon them. These buildings are knit together at the ground level with the retail so we really um, wanted to make sure that we were bringing the coffee shop and we were bringing the restaurants. You have to have all of these uses working together so whether it's, it's new residential buildings or preserving an old hotel or um, renovating existing office space or building new office space. I would categorize Van Ness as one of the best mixed-use projects probably in the Northeast. The ground floor um, is all local retail. On top of that there is Target which is, is floors two and three. From there sit two towers. One is a residential tower and one is an office tower. Many of the hospitals have their office uh, spaces in the Fenway and that adds to the vibrancy. Because Fenway is almost the geographical center 
for, for the LMA and, and Kendall Square, I think you'll start to see a lot more collaboration happen between these two neighborhoods. The Fenway is, is such a great geographic area for what I call med tech. You're finding companies who are tech-based and, and have a lot of millennials working for them, or they have the recruitment of, of young professionals, realizing the strategic location of being next to all of the medical institutions there. It's been a, a big trend for, for Boston and Cambridge to see a lot of these companies uh, circling the area, whether it's IBM Watson, um, whether it's United Healthcare, um, they're they're realizing that this is this is a part of, of an industry that that is just in the beginning stages. We created the hatch over at the landmark, which was really um, a way for us to bring. Um, some of the younger tech companies that were getting priced out of the city into the neighborhood and to grow here and, and, and see what it's like to um, live here on a daily basis and hire folks. The great news is that over the last 12 months we've leased over 500,000 square feet of office space um, which is a record for the Fenway. We've got thousands of new people who will be working in these buildings over the next six months as they start to to move in and I think that that'll add another vitality to the streets, to the street life, and it'll change Fenway and the way Fenway is being viewed in the office environment. As industries continue to expand and there's an evolution of urbanization here in the city, it, it made sense to look at the Fenway as an area that was poised for certain redevelopment to piggyback off of what's already happening there and bring it to the next generation. Everybody's really working towards the same goal of, you know, how do you um, you know, kind of create this greater place for the greater good. It was Steve Samuels that I'll never forget getting a phone call uh, from him and he was sitting, text actually, sitting three rows in front of me at the MC Club at a Red Sox game. He texted and said, what if we don't tear the hotel down? What if we do something with it? And I'm like, Steve, are you crazy? That's a 1959 Howard Johnson's. No way. So replicating brand new everything. We stripped and rebuilt the entire building, you'd never know it, but kept the shell and then began to think about how to infuse something that would be very respectful to the Fenway neighborhood. So what began was this fantastic exchange of ideas and brought on an awesome team, Elkis Manfredi and Elizabeth Lowry from Elkis is the interior designer and the architect. A lot of creativity on a 30,000 square foot hotel. The reaction to this from, from the broad base of consumer, you know, globally, uh, as seen on TripAdvisor and the comments, uh, has been remarkable. Now with having three large-scale mixed-use buildings in place, you know, over a thousand apartments, uh, the Landmark Center and a redevelopment plan there um, underway, this felt like the right time uh, to bring the Pierce online, not only for rental product, but also for for sale home ownership product. We thought about bringing this building in place because it's of its gateway designation, because it is the marker and the grand welcome to the Fenway. We partnered Architectonica with CBT Architects in Boston. They did the interiors as well as the production architecture. They brought something unique and different um, you know, a, a very modern building that, that fits in with the language of the neighborhood as well. It's 30 stories, almost 350 feet. Every unit has a fantastic view. It's floor to ceiling windows. Everybody holds that as like the jewel. That's the, the jewel of the Fenway. And even in the zoning, it was designated with a gateway designation, um, which meant it was allowed additional height. It was recognized as kind of the marker of the entrance to the Fenway. The condos start in the 800,000 range and go to about three and a half million. We're just starting to come out of the ground with the core and uh, will be complete in January of 2018. The Boston streets progress in alphabetical order from the public garden to Mass Ave, Arlington, Berkeley, Clarendon, etc. What most people think is that it stops at Hereford, and it doesn't. It was to continue to Ipswich, Jersey, which now half of it is Jersey and half of it is Yawkey Way, and Kilmonarch. It actually was supposed to end before Park Drive. More and more it's starting to feel like it's connected to Back Bay and maybe in 20 years, you know, there won't be a distinction to the end of it. It'll just bleed right in. Everybody knows the name. Everybody recognizes it. Instant recognition. And the fact is that it's authentic. I'm not sure you could have done this anywhere else. I think it's going to become a, a, a neighborhood that people say, gosh, it's just been hiding in plain sight for all these years.